My name is Mary and I work at the Perot Museum of Nature and Science in Dallas, Texas. Today I'd like to talk to you about sound. Sound is produced whenever an object vibrates. We can demonstrate this very simply using a rubber band wrapped around a plastic cup. When I pull on the rubber band and let go, it vibrates and you hear a sound. Let's talk about what's happening to this rubber band, but let's think about it on a bigger scale. I'm going to use my arm to represent the rubber band. When my arm gets pulled, it's going to start vibrating back and forth very quickly. As my arm vibrates back and forth, it's going to hit air molecules that are nearby. So my fist represents an air molecule. The rubber band hits the air molecule and the air molecule starts to move. When an air molecule is moving, it bumps into other air molecules and causes them to move as well. Every time an object, like the rubber band, bumps into an air molecule, it's transferring a little bit of energy to that air molecule. The sound is going to travel through the air until those air molecules reach a structure inside your ear called your eardrum. Your eardrum then vibrates and takes the energy from the air molecule. Your eardrum converts that and sends that through your nervous system up to your brain and your brain tells you that you're hearing a sound. When all of these air molecules are moving and bumping into each other and the sound is traveling, we call that a sound wave. Sound travels in waves. A sound wave looks something like this. You'll notice that you have high points and low points in the sound. Each sound wave has low points called troughs and high points called crests. We typically hear sounds best when they travel through gases like the air, but you can also hear sounds through liquids and solids as well. You can try this by placing your ear against the table and tapping with your other hand on the table you'll be able to hear that sound transferred across whatever surface your table is made up of. We're going to make an example of a vibrating object that will sound like a clucking chicken. You're going to need a plastic cup, some string, a pair of scissors, a little bit of water, a sponge, a screwdriver or an ice pick, and a pencil. The first step to making your vibrating clucking chicken device is to poke a hole through the top of the cup using a screwdriver or an ice pick. This should be done only with the help of a grown-up. Before you start, be sure you get a grown-up to do this for you or to help you do this. You're then going to cut your string into a piece that's about two feet long. That's 24 inches. You're also going to want to cut your sponge into a smaller piece. This one is about one inch wide by about three inches across. Once we have all of those parts, we can start assembling our clucking chicken. To do that, you're going to put the string through the hole in the top of your cup, just like so. And then to keep your string from pulling through the bottom of the cup, we're going to tie the top of the string to a pencil. You're then going to pull the string all the way down through your cup so that the pencil sits on top. Next, you're going to tie your sponge to the bottom end of your string. You can tie this pretty tight, and if the sponge gets a little squished, that's perfectly fine. Your clucking chicken device is now set up. In order to make your chicken cluck, you're going to dip your sponge in a little bit of water and then wring it out so that the sponge is damp. If there's water dripping, keep squishing the sponge. To make your chicken cluck, you're going to take the sponge, you're going to wrap it around the string, like so. So I'm wrapping the sponge around the string, hold the cup at the top, and then pull in short little tugs, like so. Let me show you one more time. We're gonna wrap it around, hold my cup at the top, and pull in short little tugs. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It sounds just like a chicken clucking. 
Now that your device is made, you can decorate the top to look like a chicken. What's happening? Well, let's think back to what we've already learned about sound, sound waves, and vibrations. When your chicken is fully assembled, you use the sponge, which is a little bit wet against the string. Putting water on the sponge allows the sponge to move smoothly along the string. However, enough friction is created between the sponge and the string that the sponge is bouncing just a little bit, which is causing the string to vibrate. As we already know, vibrations transfer a little bit of energy to the molecules around. In this case, the cup, the pencil, and the air molecules that are inside the cup. When those molecules vibrate and are moved, then that gets transferred as a sound wave to our ear and we hear the sound like a clucking chicken. So essentially you've set up the same thing that we did at the beginning with a rubber band, it's just a fancier version.